an online chess class where I, your chess guide today, will be teaching you how to play a very solid opening for the black pieces, which is named the French defense. So before we start the lesson, perhaps uh, I just would like to confirm that uh, I can see myself and also you guys can hear me. All right, I'm pretty sure that uh, I can see myself. I always have one tab open just to make sure the technical uh, parts are, are dealt with and I can also hear myself, which is fantastic. So I would like you to be active uh, as the audience, as you always are. Uh, use me as your chess coach. If there are any kind of chess related questions about general training or specific lines that we are going to be reviewing in the French game, uh, please don't be shy, don't hesitate. Say hello in the chat, I don't bite, and uh, uh, feel more than comfortable of asking questions. I, I like and I love actually to be answering them uh, in as much depth as I can. So let's start at the start, uh, the story of the French defense. Uh, at least this story was told to me uh, by my first chess coach in uh, my, my first chess club. And uh, he said uh, that after White played e4, long, long time ago, there was a French soldier um, who was feeling too weak. Uh, he wanted to play e7 to e5, but in the middle of the move, he felt weakness in his hand. And suddenly he accidentally dropped the pawn on the e6 square. And this became known as the French defense. I don't know how how uh, realistic this story really is. It's up for historians to figure this out, if at all it is possible, but I think that uh, to every story, there is at least part of, um, part of truth out there. And anyway, I, I feel like this is a fantastic way to, to, to describe the, the, the story of the French defense. And so the, the goal of the move is similar to the Karakan defense, which would be the move to C6. Um, on the next move, we're trying to fight for the center with the move D5. Now, funnily enough, this is an opening that I, as a chess coach, uh, hello everyone, uh, hello to Samir, hello to Shivant, and hello to Joshi. I hope I pronounce your names right. Um, I always say that I'm not the best <laughs> name pronouncer, but I really try my best. Uh, hello everyone, uh, be active in the chat if you wanna ask me anything, please do. And so I wanted to say that this opening that I'm going to teach you today is an opening that I recommend for beginners. Um, it's also good for any kind of level players. We have uh, players in the top 100 and the top 10 that are playing uh, the French defense. One of them perhaps is Nipomneshi, for example, the Russian super grandmaster who, is, uh, who was playing in the candidates and uh, he used the French defense in, in, in the perhaps the most important tournament of his life. So why would I recommend it? Well. Uh, first of all, uh, when we're playing e4, e5s, I as a chess coach, if you don't know chess theory, I just find it really hard to watch my students uh, losing after some f7 sacrifices. So this point is vulnerable. If you know what you're doing, e5 is oh, uh, perfectly perfect move, maybe even the best move, but as an amateur, there are many gambits that are related to that. And uh, there are quite a few lines where black has to know what they're doing and with e6 if you know your plans it's really hard to get into trouble like there are not many good uh, traps that white can set up in this opening at least in our repertoire of course uh, i'm not saying black is better but uh, uh, black is perfectly okay uh, everywhere as black should be it means that slightly worse of course but uh, comfortable Good evening uh, from India. Someone is saying hello to you. It's afternoon here and we can also say good morning to those who are watching us from uh, the States or Canada, any kind of uh, Western country. So we're going to look at quite a few lines and I want to start at the advanced variation. I feel like it's uh, one of the most natural moves and uh, as a beginner, I feel like this is something that you will encounter the most. So what's the idea of it, uh, for black especially? White is claiming the space and they restrict our knight and they want the things to stay this way. But 
if you're giving up the center uh, to your opponent or this space we need either attack it undermine it or block it one of those things and black tries to put immense pressure on d4 and uh, pretty much white uh, only finds himself after c3 with uh, any kind of advantage so the story goes like this uh, in the french defense um, white has the space advantage but black and you if you're going to play the french defense is going to develop first means that black is going to be the one that is going to put uh, pressure on the white's position and develop the initiative so that's the good thing about it uh, someone is saying good morning from Jamaica whoa we have someone from Jamaica very nice that we have uh, people in the audience from all over uh, the world uh, morning in the states afternoon in in Europe and evening uh, light evening in in India hope you're all having a great day so if uh, if white say doesn't go for c3 we can look at a couple of moves that white can try well for example knight to f3 we really want to undermine their pawn structure and now black has probably a better position e5 it's shaky it can get attacked via many ways like for example you could uh, already imagine knight could come to e uh, g6 knight come to c6 queen to c7 immense pressure and really f4 is not the move you want to play because this diagonal already is something that black will take advantage of so for example a move like knight c6 and amateurs in these situations like to play bishop to b5 when black is feeling more than comfortable of uh, exchanging in general pieces because white has space advantage if you have less space you want to exchange pieces but also if, if if white was to take on c6 where simply getting our bad bishop the opposite color of our own pawns uh, into the game so for example knight c6 bishop c6 this is more than comfortable for black um, i think black has a uh, very good center and at some point we might be getting c5 e5 is a weakness and um, black i think should be better now it's just important to note one thing if you enter in this position don't rush with c5 now it seems like white has really uh, sorry black has really strong center but white can start undermining it we have really highly and developed uh, king side and so white could be uh, starting to develop the initiative with moves like c4 so yes d4 kind of gets us uh, a pass pawn but the pawn is blocked uh, now knight is coming to to square e4 where it's going to aim at c5 and d6 uh, we don't want that so instead already don't rush with c5 i feel like knight e7 and <clears throat> then black is is better hello to lester john belbar from uh, philippines hello everyone uh, so nice to see such an active audience so let's get back to the advanced variation of the french defense uh, the most important line perhaps to know um, white plays c3 and here we want to develop the initiative so we play knight to c6 in the french defense we often in the advanced variation of the french defense delay the king side development uh, because we want to develop the initiative which will make white place the pieces on not the best squares so for example this bishop wants to come to d3 it's absolutely gorgeous marvelous square for the bishop to be but if we put enough pressure he's not going to be able to do it uh, as you will see so knight to c6 and we're already questioning the existence of the d4 pawn knight to f3 and now we're going to make a move queen to b6 so queen is safe here so we're not bringing uh, the queen to any danger and the most important aspect of this move is really pressure on the pawn d4 and b2 so a tactic to know as a beginner that if say they develop the bishop to e3 which seems to be very natural just to guard the pawn on on d4 then we're able to take on b2 and we're having a winning position matei welcome from canada very nice to see you here as well how are you today so we're gonna observe a couple of options how white can deal with this and uh, as i said in the french advanced variation you develop first as black so you're the one that's putting pressure and i myself lush love initiative so much it's my favorite uh, advantage in chess perhaps and uh, i just like to be moving forward while creating threats and my opponent has to defend so in this position if white does not know the theory white is gonna be in trouble trust me 
So he gotta know his uh, his opening theory. Now the most ambitious move uh, that seems to be Bishop D3 here is incorrect, and uh, we're gonna observe why. Uh, Black will first take on D4 and define the structure as it, as it is to make sure that D4 pawn uh, stays there as a weakness. We don't want, as we are gonna put pressure, we don't want to let White. Uh, in this specific line after bishop d3 allow d takes c5 for example bishop to d7 would be the change in move order which allows d takes c5 and after b4 and knight coming to d4 square at some point white is going to be able to blockade our center and white is absolutely fine here so after bishop d3 we're going to take on d4 and already the existence of d4 pawn is very questionable now, there is a tactic of why we cannot be taking that pawn. Um, for example, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and queen d4 seems to be losing a pawn for white. But there is this discovered check, which uh, is, a, again, a double attack, and black would be losing the queen because black's king is jeopardy and also the queen is under attack. So, after we define the structure, we're playing this move bishop to d7, which in the same line is not gonna allow white that um, discovered attack. So for example, castles, and now we're safe to take that black is safe pawn up with a lot better position. So now, again, just to show you, there are no checks that the bishop could land, and so our queen is safe. And of course, if they make moves like bishop c2, which seems to give a, a defender on the d4 pawn, we have already moves like a knight to b4 and black develops and continues with the initiative. So again, in this advanced French, as you can see, uh, by delaying the development of the, of the king side, uh, we're applying pressure and developing the initiative on the white center and this way we're forcing white to commit to moves that they do not want for example now already white has to play perhaps bishop to e2 or we're gonna look at a3 which is the main line and bishop e2 is not a square that white is very happy for the bishop they would want to have it on d3 that's where it's the most active looks at h7 at our king perhaps there on the king side if that's where white is going to castle and in general, in these positions, if knight ever moves, he wants f4, f5. Because if the center is blocked, we play on the flanks. So after bishop e2, let's just observe how uh, black can get a comfortable position. And our repertoire um, takes on d4, takes on d4, again, defining that weakness. And now we're playing knight to h6 with the idea of bringing knight to f5 in order to apply the pressure on uh, the d4 square. So again, next move, black has the third attacker. And the pawn is only attacked, uh, defended twice. So white is feeling a little bit uh, uh, uncomfortable. So someone is asking if uh, they want to organize an online chess tournament in their organizations. Uh, any suggestion? So from technical point of view, uh, I'm not an expert, but I think in general, that's a great idea and your organization should love that. I actually have heard that many firms, many companies in my own country are doing that and people enjoy that so much. You don't have to be a genius in order to play in the chess tournament, just know the moves. And I'm sure Gupta that uh, people are going to uh, love it a, a lot. So really encourage you to, to, to organize that. It's just that from technical point of view of the, the the platform and all that. I'm not an expert on that field. Um, thank you very much for the question, uh, by the way. And everyone who is feeling like they wanna ask something, use me as your personal chess coach during these streams. I really enjoy answering all of the questions and just share my own experience and, and knowledge. So in this position, uh, black is coming to a five uh, with the knight and uh, the problem for white is that if bishop takes h6, which seems to be damaging our pawn structure, there is a move queen takes b2. And now after knight b2, because the rook was in, in, in uh, under attack, we're taking on h6 and we're kind of pawn up. White does have a compensation, but black is a pawn up. So that's the thing with this knight h6 and not allowing bishop takes h6. Now, any attempts like b3 uh, with the ideas of bringing the bishop to b2 and guarding the pawn on d4, also uh, black is fine. Knight f5, say bishop to b2, boom, bishop b4. And now you cannot place the knight on d2 
because then you, your queen is no longer defending d4, right? So it turns out you have to make some kind of king f1, right? And now after castles, again, I can leave you at that, right? With a heart on the hand, you're on the heart, right? So again, fine position. So it turns out that after knight h6, um, there is a move knight to c3, which people play, with the idea of after knight f5, playing knight to a4. So as for the moment, we cannot take on d4 because the, the white's knight is defending that. And so we have to put the queen somewhere, for example, check, bishop to d2, hitting the queen, bishop to b4, that's some kind of theory, and a bishop to c3. And white finds some kind of control over d4, not dropping that. Black is also feeling pretty comfortable that. So for example, b5 continuing the initiative, that initiative that we're always referring to in the advanced French for black. And if white can get things under control and uh, all things equal, this space advantage is an advantage. But at the same time, a black doesn't allow an easy life, right? So for example, a3, bishop takes, knight takes, and b4 continuing the initiative. Uh, this was seen in a couple of games. So as you can see, this advanced variation, um, it's not basically pina coladas for white. Uh, they're feeling under pressure and... Uh, the correct way here to play is a3, which is not a move you make if you have never seen theory. Uh, again, I, I believe that those who are familiar with the French defense, yes, a3 might be a natural move. But uh, to others, it's, um, it's a very creative, I would say, move. And the idea is to get b4 and expand on the queen side. And then we can place the bishop on b2. So how does change our things? Well, now we have a couple of lines uh, how we could be playing this and... First, I want to be looking at, uh, at c4. Um, there is also a move c takes d4 here, uh, but it's already inaccurate because in this position, white will be getting the knight to c3. So we want to go knight f5, knight to c3, knight f5, again knight to a4. And uh, here, uh, white is comfortable. So basically, after this correct move with a3, there are a couple of ways to play this. So... Uh, we're going to look at a couple of lines, and I think that the, the most, uh, perhaps not the most enjoyable, but one of the most popular, if not the most popular line would be c4. Now I have to say that in general c4 without the inclusion of a3 is a mistake. So for example, if we were to make in general, like let's just imagine something we play, um, okay, h3 like uh, or bishop e2 or something, and c4, then you're always running under b3. And here black is, white is already undermining your space advantage. So this is already a really good position for white. So takes, takes, a rook starts playing, and there are possibilities of expanding with c4, and black's advantage is undermined. So only after a3 we can play c4 because they don't have b3. Well, we have this so quote unquote under control. Thank you so much for being so active. I welcome everyone to, to ask any kind of chess-related questions or about the positions. I can see Samuel again. Hello to you. Very nice to see you again. Um, everyone who is enjoying this stream, I would appreciate if you put a like on this video. That really means a lot to me. Thank you very much. And try to be uh, active in the chat if you have any kind of questions. I don't bite. So c4 is really good after white plays a3. Um, Knight bd2 with ideas of uh, perhaps dreaming of the move b3 at some point. And black plays here knight to a5. So for example, if we were just to play bishop to d7, white gets b3. And again, undermining our space advantage, which was granted by the pawn on, on, on c4. Again, um, if we look at the structure, uh, the center is closed. And so both players are trying to play on the flanks if the center is blocked. So say f4, f5 ideas or b3 ideas for white and f6 and say, okay, play on the queen side ideas for black with the pieces usually for black on the queen side. So we're gonna maneuver the knights and getting the bishops to a4, you will see these kind of things. f6 is also applicable plan and as an idea. So here, um, the typical sag that I wanna show you, which is super important to know, after knight g7, a very, very important tactic because it's not really very common um, in other openings, would be bishop takes c4 here. Mamma mia, what is happening? So the idea is that after d takes c4, knight is getting to d6 while hitting the queen. 
fight. So once that knight gets to d6, I mean, king is in check, f7 is dropping, and white is winning the game. So be aware of these, uh, these tricks with bishop takes c4. So that's why black plays also knight a5, uh, not allowing any tricks, and also stopping b3. So white plays usually bishop e2, and I kind of give you a direction here, and we could leave this, uh, this variation. Bishop to d7 would usually queenside castles. Black sometimes even wants to get this bishop on a4. That's why we need a knight to get to b6. That's going to be another type of maneuver. So castles, knight e7. Rook to b1 is usually played so that uh, knight b3, like prophylaxis against knight b3 so that rook wouldn't get hit. And also this move, of course, supports b3. So we have queen to c7, moving the queen out of the way so that the knight could get there. B c8 a lot of the times. Rook e1, knight c8. And this type of maneuvering. White is also trying to make room for their pieces, opening up the dark square bishop now, and say this would be the go-to starting positions if you're a grandmaster that you could analyze. So black would be playing actually on both flanks. He could cast so long and hope to really put the rook on g8 and go crazy on the king side. Black would also go for plans of, say, bishop a4s and trying to play with these pieces on the queen side and make something out of it. All right, so let's look at another alternative for uh, advanced variation. Um, variation number two, e4, e6, d4, d5, and advanced variation of the French defense. So we would have c5, c3, similar stuff, knight c6, developing and creating that initiative super important knight f3 queen b6 and same move a3 so now we're going to take a different approach which is going to be knight to h6 so basically the idea is to um, apply that pressure on uh, on d4 with the knight coming to f5 so white usually plays b4 over here we have c takes d4 and here i have to say that already white has an in-between move of taking on h6 because black doesn't have queen takes b2 which he had in the previous line so here already it's a very interesting structure to play for both sides uh, black is playing uh, both sides are playing for the wing uh, white is better but really interesting positions to play so like bishop d7 bishop e2 for example and uh, black usually castles here and tries to undermine the white center with f6 so that's the Go to plan. Of course, moves like rook g8 and playing on the king side are, of course, also playable. But most of the people, uh, they just take back, allow this knight f5 and pressure on d4 because white already can play bishop to b2. So, bishop on b2 already guards and all of the pieces this d4 enough the third time. And black has to come uh, with in, uh, innovative, say, ideas to continue developing that initiative. Because statically, white has this pawn on e5, which guarantees them space advantage. So bishop d7 is a very common move. In general, later we might want to get bishop to b5 after, if the knight moves at all, and develop the initiative this way. But not develop the initiative, but exchange our bad bishop. Uh, if we could exchange the light square bishops, that's awesome. Uh, but it also prepares rook c8 to put it on uh, the open pile. So white is not sleeping on that. They're making sense of uh, the position of the knight on f5. And here you could say retreat to e7 or even to h6, which is playable. Again, very interesting lines. Uh, h3 and then f6. And trying to undermine the, the white center like this. If you want, you can invest some time looking at that. That's also an interesting line. But the main line theory is to go back. So knight to c3, it seems like white has everything under control. Uh, white wants to get knight to a4. And suddenly, boom, black finds this resource again of placing the knight on a5. Uh, you cannot take it due to the pin on the on the b file. And black continues with that same initiative. It felt like already it should have stopped. So white is playing queen c2, and black is getting that knight on an outpost on c4. So this is, again, one of the uh, po most popular lines in the French defense. And it's absolute theory. Of course, depends on, on uh, your level. And uh, perhaps you don't need to know them in so much depth. 
But I believe that these are interesting positions in general to analyze that boost one overall uh, understanding of the game because um, the, the ideas transpose and one idea that work in the French defense, they could be applicable in many other lines as well. So here, white kind of gives up the bishop and that is their good bishop for such a wonderful knight and then win the c4 pawn. And the idea of blacks is that uh, what they're giving up are these light squares and so blacks uh, frog the bad bishop becomes a prince and will have a very decent compensation for the pawn so for example queen c6 still trying to defend it and now if we would have time we would want to get a b5 but unfortunately this d6 check is coming and it's very nasty because then if king moves he wants to take on f7 so we kind of have to go knight c8 we lose a pawn b5 and we're getting to an end game where uh, black is going to have good compensation for the pawn. So say f3 and knight b6. Look how uh, beautiful a uh, grip uh, black has on these light squares. Pawn down, but um, I feel like black should be also quite comfortable. Um, easier position in general to play for black, but white is a pawn up. So these were the, the most fundamentals of, of the advanced variation. And I'm pretty sure that if you're, uh, let's say, online below... Uh, 20 something uh, 20, 2000 rating then uh, you're good to go with these lines and already feeling very comfortable in these positions so there is definitely advanced variation is not the only one of playing so um, there are quite a few other lines that we must check and uh, we're going to start with very interesting approach which is uh, the the tarash so it would be the knight uh, coming to d2 and perhaps one of again the most popular variations in in chess when playing the french defense so in my um repertoire for you guys i don't want to drift away from our pawn structures the uh, perhaps one of the main moves if not the, the most popular one would be to play a c5 over here but we're going to play knight f6 and provoke y to play e5 when we're going to find ourselves in very similar structures don't play knight e4 here after takes takes this is just not good for black let's not play that instead we're going to exactly same structure we're going to, we're going to try to develop very similar initiative on the white center so that you would be familiar with the pawn structure and as i said ideas transpose the squares for the pieces the general pawn breaks and all of those they're similar of what we have in all of all, most of other french variations so uh, white again plays c3 in order to have this uh, pawn chain that is very solid. Black goes c5. And here white has a couple of moves. So f4 is possible. And we're going to look at similar variations uh, or structure in the, in the next uh, variation for white, which is the classical way of playing. And let's just see what happens if white plays solid bishop d3, which is the most popular move in this position. So we're going to follow again with that initiative with knight c6 and trying to apply this pressure on on the white pawns. and uh, what is interesting with this move knight d2 is that white plays knight e2 so that the other knight could go to f3 and now we have really good defense over d4 so that we would never worry about it like we had to worry as white in the previous variation so that knight on d2 um is coming actually is the one that comes to f3 and this knight comes to e2 again so for super solid position with the pawn on d4 or even maybe in some cases uh, leaving f4 f5 ideas uh, because of the knight on e2 if anyone has any kind of questions i would really uh, gladly open uh, open it up and answer them any chess related questions um uh, don't be shy in the chat. Uh, I would be very happy to share my own knowledge and experience um, in anything related to chess. So just like in the previous lines, um, queen b6 here um, could be met with knight f3. So we kind of don't want that because now he has it covered enough times and we're not, uh, not making white develops and kind of weirdly like in the previous lines. So instead, we're going to define the structure here with c takes d4 and we're gonna play it a bit differently than in the previous line where we played on the queen side we're gonna bombard their center with f6 so f6 is a move that is very common 
in the French defense advanced variation, we're trying to undermine the white's center. So once they take, there is this battle going on for the e5 square. And in general, the player that has more like control, oh, okay, if white doesn't control e5, black might be just better, right? So that's a square, the go-to square for white to defend. Now our bishop that was bad gets a new diagonal there and it just new waters. At some point we might get e5, it could turn back, it really depends on the position, but it's definitely a candidate plan in, uh, in, in, in this variation. So f6, again, weird for those who have not seen this structure before and um, very common and typical for those who have. So we have e takes f6 and uh, knight to f6 and fight for the e5 square ends. So knight to f3 is white, putting the pressure on this e5 square. Bishop to d6, trying to fight for the e5 square as well. Castles, queen c7, continuing the fight for the e5 square. And now white has a very typical plan here um, that is applicable in many different openings, just colors reversed. Uh, for example, in the Karakhan, white would love to exchange the good bishop of opponents. So why I'm saying that this bishop is good for black and bad for white? Well, our good bishop is the opposite color of the pawns in the center. Those bishops, good bishops, defend our weaknesses. So right now, the weak squares for black would be e5 and c5. And the weak squares for white would be c4 and, c, and, and e4. So our d6 bishop and their d3 bishop is the good one. And this bishop only can hope to become an active one. So sometimes bad, bad bishop could be a very active piece when it controls a lot of squares. But here white just wants to exchange his bad bishop for our good bishop with this maneuver. Very applicable in many different openings. You would be surprised how often I'm able to use that. So uh, white goes bishop to g5, black castles, <clears throat> and now white goes for his idea, bishop to h4. And funnily enough, we're going to find ourselves in the attack as black against the white king. So we make this move knight h5, which kind of shifts cards, because we might get a knight takes a g3 after bishop to g3. So for example, bishop g3, we keep our good bishop, and so they only change their bad bishop for our knight. So after, for example, one of the moves could be g6, bringing the queen over here, putting pressure on e5, d4. Black finds himself comfortable. White is not worse. Black is fine as well. However, uh, white is very brave in the opening theory, as always. Like, the computers come up with brilliant ideas. And so white just plays queen to c2. So white is uh, attacking this h7. And here I would like to ask the, the audience, very soon of a move, first black plays h6, and here white plays bishop to g6. How can black attack the white's king here? So this would be an exercise for you. SS, thank you for the question. They're asking, isn't castling not so important in the French? Yes, it is not, but it depends on the variation. So if you play for f6, then I think castling makes much more sense, especially in this variation, right, previously. Um, so it depends on variation. As you saw, we have variations where we delay kingside castling in the advanced variation um, because we want to develop the initiative on the center. Then there are other variations where we castle queenside even, right? And there are variations like this one where we castle kingside. Here, once we open up the, we play f6 and we open up the f file, we just need the rook on f8. I, I think that uh, that's one of the reasons why, uh, why black castles so early in this variation. So Samuel is uh, suggesting a very uh, interesting idea, which is absolute theory. And I'm going to bombard you with an interesting theory of variations because that's the go-to line for black. And I, if I decide to play French uh, occasionally, then uh, I enter myself quite often in this position, to be honest, or something that looks very, very similar. So the idea is to sack the exchange, very typical in the French defense. You're sacrificing material in order to claim that opponent's king is weak. So we're damaging opponent's pawn structure. So essentially the material is less important than king safety, but it depends how much material and how unsafe the king is. So why are you saying, well, you sack the exchange, you get compensation, but I can get out of it. 
So very interesting dynamical battle begins. A uh, black shifts the cards. Black also gets the pawn for uh, for the for the exchange. Bishop takes h2, and here there are a couple of moves: king h1 or king h g2. And now the go-to idea, the go-to move that is the only move that continues the initiative for black after both king g2 or king h1 would be knight to f4. So the idea is this: that we're attacking g6 first of all, right? Also, of course, if they take. We, we do a discovered attack with with um, with our queen. So same thing would happen after opponent would play king to g2. It's just that it comes with a check. So say knight takes f4 and bishop takes f4. Or of course, if, um, if they were to take on h2, then we take on g6 with a check. So they don't have the time, most importantly, to eat our pawn knight on g6. And so black continues with kingside attack. So king h1, according to the theory, is uh, more accurate and just enjoy the dynamics. Knight f4, uh, white is playing knight to g3. It's also possible to take on h2, but as I said, knight g6, and then for example, queen f7, and black finds himself um, having a huge compensation for, for the exchange. So at least theory suggests that uh, black is better. Bishop to d7, rook I guess is coming to f8. d4 is also always under pressure because you cannot develop the knight. And I guess black uh, combined all that, having only one pawn down, one pawn for the exchange, but having these weaknesses as white and weak king, black feels pretty comfortable. So instead of taking really uh, on h2, uh, what in theory white plays uh, is knight to g3, which leaves the d4 unguarded. However, the point is that if we're playing now knight takes d4, uh, then our queen is hanging. So first we have to move our queen out of the way with queen to b6. And here, again, just dynamics and theory goes on and on. Imagine that if you're a grandmaster, if there are any grandmasters in the chat, then uh, that's where the theory starts actually, right? So all this attack. For example, king to h2 already leads to knight takes d4 because queen isn't hanging there. We have knight takes f3 ideas, knight g6. All of these are in the air. So usually white plays rook a to d1, and after bishop d7, game continues. Right? So really very interesting attack, and if both don't know the theory, it's really fun to play. If someone knows theory, they hold the upper hand. Right? So this was um, the Tarash defense with knight d2 and one of the most popular uh, variations in it. And now let's go to the... Um, To the next variation number four which is going to be uh, the so-called classical line so here white is playing knight to c3 instead of knight to d2 yes samuel you were correct on rook takes f3 surprise surprise yeah you're always guessing the right moves so after knight c3 we're again gonna provoke black uh white to push e5 we don't want them to push us out of the out of our pawn structure and here there are a couple of ways um, to play this with white for example one of the lines could be bishop to g5 uh, when there are many many ways uh, to play here for black one of them is just being take here and play bishop e7 one okay white has a little bit more space but you as black will have a comfortable development and uh, these are one of the lines that you could analyze and uh, are playable for for both sides Bishop, by the way, after bishop g5, definitely there are other moves, like for example, bishop to b4, and really interesting interesting situations come uh, come to place. But I think that uh, at least at, uh, at the level um, that you are in, the most popular line should be e5. Um, maybe I'm wrong, don't know the statistics, but that's at least um, what I most encounter in my students' games. And here again, we're going for this knight fd7 retreat, c5, and similar pressure. But this time, uh, white can defend it with f4. And that's what I mentioned in the previous lines, that f4 and this structure is something we're going to take a look at the next variation. And now, pretty much, it's very similar, but white has really good center with more pawns there. But remember that pushing the pawns forward also create weaknesses on the back so while this is a strength uh, it also uh, creates a lot of weaknesses in say the end game hello kabar how are you doing today um i'm welcoming again everyone to 
So ask me any kind of chess related questions. Uh, use me as your personal chess coach. I would also appreciate if, uh, if you would put a like on this video. Uh, that means that you're enjoying the video. Uh, I feel very good about it. And now we can <clears throat> uh, look at these lines with a little bit um, an inclusion of f4, which is a bit different structure. Um, here there are quite a few ways to play for white. First, let's look at um, a little bit uh, rarer line, which would be knight to e2. And here we can, uh, again, f6 uh, is always an idea in all the lines of the French, but here we could already continue again with queen to b6. And um, white has this massive space, but uh, this weakness is, means weaknesses as well. And um, it looks good to the eyeballs, but once you play these positions, black also has uh, his own merits that he is proud of in the positions, as you're going to see especially the development of whites for example okay bishop is feeling on c1 very uncomfortable and how on earth are you going to develop the light square bishop how you're going to castle this knight is basically paralyzed to defend d4 right so it's, it, it's just hard for, for white to, 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 to develop the pieces and this is one of the disadvantages that all this mass gives him it's hard to go hold, hold on to it so we're here we can again play f6 uh, which is a typical idea apologies i didn't want to make d takes c5 that's a very bad idea so white plays a3 with ideas of b4 bishop to e7 say b4 takes takes and castles and it was seen in a couple of grandmaster games similar ideas uh something we have seen uh f6 and uh, the play on the queen side and I think that you here can apply similar ideas to the ones you applied in the previous ones. So hello, Froda. Welcome to the welcome to the chat. I'm very pleased to see you. So many people are joining. Very nice. Uh, so this is the the rare line with ninety two. It's just discomfort of having the knight there because it makes the development harsher. Um, so the go to move is queen bishop e three. And here there are many, many moves that we could do. Uh, we could play the typical uh, queen b6. Perhaps a6 is uh, the, the, the line that I like to play. Um, the move itself is uh, useful for many, many, many reasons. In general, a6, just like in the Sicilian, at some point, if ever we control the square, not allow white pieces to go there. At some point, we might get bishop d7, bishop b5. At some point, we might want to go b5. So, it, of course, it all depends on what white plays next, but the main reason for it is really to prepare b5. Right. So, uh, as white expansion, uh, white expanded so much on the king side, I guess queen d2 castles would be one of the plans as, as well available for him. So, then this pawn storm on the queen side makes a lot of sense for black. Queen d2, b5, and here again, quite a few lines that we could uh, go to. The most interesting and uh, the one that I pre prepared as a dessert for you uh, was an idea that was played here uh, with black pieces. It was popular um, quite a few years ago. Maybe I remember it was really, really popular like 10 years ago. Again, I, I could be wrong. Maybe it was popular uh, in the old days as well. But I just saw very high rated players uh, play this uh, next move of, with the black pieces. And it's a crazy idea that uh, not everyone uh, would find uh, even natural. Um, I'm going to just show it to you. I don't think I can give this to you as an exercise. But the move is uh, g5. And this is, again, if you won't like this as black, you don't have to, there are, to play this. There are alternatives that are calm. And g5, just look at that. Um, the idea is pretty much clear. We're undermining their center. So if, say, they take here, d4 gets weaker. If you take with the knight, d4 gets weaker. And altogether, we're just undermining their center from the side. Because center is kind of locked, right? And we're questioning the existence of how stable the center is. So someone says they like the, uh, the, uh, the exchange variation. I'm going to show you how to get fighting positions with the exchange variation, all right? I hope I'm going to leave some time for that. So that means we have to hurry with this line. Don't worry, I, I will take care of you. So, I guess uh, G5 here um, is the sharpest variation that we could get. So I can just show you some theory here 
takes g5 means takes on d4, right? We're undermining their center. And so after knight takes d4 or bishop takes, uh, we take the pawn already on e5, which lost protection. And say bishop e2, bishop g7, castles, castle, very interesting position arise. Very interesting position to play. I would imagine that you could practice this against uh, uh, your coaches or sparring partners online. Just give yourself a rapid time control and just play it out to feel the position itself. If you're at the high level enough to get to these positions, if not, of course, uh, don't need because it, it that won't bring you realistic practical benefits, perhaps. But knowing these ideas and analyzing them just, I believe, also boosts your overall understanding of chess. So that just knowing and considering a move like G5 and any similar structure so that it would be of, on your list of candidate moves already is quite something. So if you want to play calm, I recommend queen e5. So very simple. Then say uh, the ideas of b4, rook b8 next. Very clear cut plan, play on the queen side and that's it. So <clears throat> I, I myself played that. I am not into those sharp stuff because I know that there are people that know the theory. I don't want to play very sharp lines without knowing the theory. So uh, though someone is asking, can I explain the basics again? Um, I have to say that this video, this whole stream, is going to be on the YouTube channel of ours or of Chess on Chess24, and you will be able to re-watch it all. And I started at the basics. You can even revin the stream and go back to there. So it's gonna be there. Don't worry if you missed the, the start. So there is a question about bishop to c8. As always, just know in, in French there are uh, there are like these ideas, right? So gonna it depends on what white plays and i kind of give you one destination right so in general these are the ideas right uh if we could succeed with b4 and a5 bishop could get to a6 again depends on what white plays and maybe not with the line on a3 right now the bishop could sometimes stay on b7 the bishop could go to d7 and run to b5 should i make it red right so that that those are also ways of developing the bishop so for example if you get the pawn to b4 and then the knight moves say knight to b6 this is also make it yellow maybe yeah so that you could see bishop d7 bishop b5 and the last way of the developing the bishop in the french would be f6 bishop d7 bishop e8 bishop here or here so these are the ideas of how to take care of the bishop and you see on which one is applicable right it depends on what place if he prevents one then you go for the other but i feel like every time you get and commit to a bad piece you gotta know um how to basically take uh, advantage on how to develop it so in in theory most of the time okay a3 is played and here i just recommend uh, queen uh, queen a5 and uh, and and b4 uh well, there are many people that play also d takes c5 just relieving the tension so here would have takes and takes and very simple play here i i feel like black is already better right so for example queen f2 on id and queen b6 and black again plays uh b4 similar to to the question of soul mio uh, again maybe you could play a5 and uh, and the bishop to a4 bishop i'm sorry to a6 right Rook to b8, castles, and typical play black is comfortable. So I'm glad we have some time for the exchange variation as well. Um, is it exchange variation? All right. So, so first of all, how to play the exchange variation for the win? Okay. Because that's the question. And then I will give you, if you don't want to play for the win, if you just want to have solid position. Again, I'm not saying that you realistically are going to win the games, right? But there has to be an attempt of somehow playing this with an imbalance so this variation is i couldn't say completely harmless how can you say that something is drawish when only one pawn has been exchanged right so if computer makes a draw here easily that doesn't mean it is a draw and i'm gonna give you a few lines to create here an imbalance by the way uh if anyone again has questions please go ahead and ask and those who just joined uh thank you very much for putting likes on the video I appreciate that a lot. And so, knight f3 here is the most popular line. Of course, there are other moves like it doesn't matter much, but bishop d3 could be played. But I believe knight f3 is the go-to most popular move here to make. And very early on, we're going to make an um, imbalance. So we're going to play bishop to d6. 
So knight f3 kind of prepares c4, which we allow. Now, let's take a look first at what happens if they play bishop to d3. Let's play knight e7. So we're creating already an imbalance. We're making sense that this knight on f3 is, say, worse than the knight on e7. What are the arguments? Our bishop could go to f5, our knight could go to f5, and we're not running into any kind of pins. There are drawbacks, I get it, right? Less active, less control over e4, whatever is relevant, right? But knight to e7 is a very interesting move that just shows the first sign that black is going to create some kind of imbalance, and imbalances, as you know, make it uh, easier to play for the win. So, castles, castles, bishop g5, uh, and uh, an attempt again to perhaps pin and even exchange their bad bishop for our good bishop on d6. So we're kicking him out. Bishop h4, and now we exchange his good bishop with bishop to f5, right? So here we should be feeling pretty comfortable. So for example, bishop to g3, takes, takes, knight to c6, and black finds himself without much problems. So for example, a couple of games have seen this. c3, queen d7, queen to c2, we have to take, take, and knight f5, we put the rook on e8, and... Uh, and that's the story, right? I have to say one interesting thing in the advance uh, in, in the exchange variation that it feels like there is a huge fight for the e file going on. But usually two rooks on the e file here are not good because the invasion squares are taken care of. So like if white doubles the rooks on the e file somehow, he can never invade because this square is always covered by my minor piece or most of the time. So only one rook belongs on the e file. It's very counterintuitive, right? Other rook belongs. A lot of the time somewhere else now um so the go to of, of course there are other moves like knight to c3 then we create an imbalance with c6 so he wants to put the knight on c3 we're gonna put the knight on c6 so bishop d3 and knight e7 again with ideas of bishop f5 knight f5 in some case i like bishop f5 more um and the absolute uh, critical is c4 so that's what this knight f3 is aimed at playing knight f3 so here again we have an imbalance because we're gonna play knight to f6 and we're welcoming white to play c5 interesting positions arise but basically we're going to play this with pawn to b6 and try to ask the existence of the and safety of the c5 pawn for example bishop to e7 bishop d3 and then b6 b4 of course runs into a5 so very typical idea that if a3 um this is pinned and they cannot be taking back that being the basic point so i guess that after b6 they one of the moves is is to take one i believe again black is comfortable and perhaps i even pick black because you get c5 ideas so um knight c3 is usually played after which we castle and we temporarily sack the pawn but please take in mind that uh, we're gonna win this back and they're gonna play the isolated pawn which is neither good or bad i'm not against isolated pawn in fact i love isolated pawn right but i believe that black also feeling is feeling comfortable in this isolated pawn this should have been him here right the, the the arrow all right let me remove that so black is also having a stable uh grip on the blockading square of that isolated pawn uh d5 and so we're feeling comfortable for example knight bd7 and say if they're gonna play bishop to g5 we have to go for it so h6 bishop h4 knight b6 and now we're attacking this e4 pawn and it's just hard to hold on to two double pawns like that right so for example i'm pinning ourselves and there is too much pressure on the square and we're gonna win it back and play the isolated pawn so instead they could also play bishop e2 without the pin then we're gonna prevent the pin uh with h6 and say castles knight b6 and winning the pawn back again so for example like this and we're having really good control over d5 uh, i don't think isolated pawn is really very good here um because black already feeling comfortable and not allows any kind of breaks um but definitely playable for both sides it's just that since it's black's repertoire i feel like black is more than comfortable in in, in this position so any kind of questions uh about chess I would gladly answer use me as your chess coach um, and share my knowledge we still have a couple of minutes so don't worry i don't bite yeah
right so this is one of the variations of how we aim at at, at playing for the win right um just trying to create those imbalances everywhere and of course maybe i could just show the um the classical way of playing that and how to uh, how black if white wants to make a draw so then pieces would be developed this way it's just important to see this once like if players are agreeing to a draw and no one wants to win pieces are developed this way and we just reach complete symmetry right so there were many many games thousands of games how draw has been reached again same maneuver of exchanging opponents good bishop the opposite color of your own pawns in the center that's the good bishop right exchange 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 and here like 95 or so percent of the games are are draw right however even interestingly enough in this line uh there there is a way for white to create an imbalance it would be the check on e2 um again no, not gonna claim that uh, white has an advantage here but say after queen e7 which is already an accuracy white does have an advantage we reach a position where uh, black's bishop is a lot worse than the bishop on f4 right and white is feeling already very comfortable over here because there's also going to be quick quick pin over the e file and white is better here but the go-to move is give up the bishop pair with bishop e6 knight g5 right so this is how black should be playing so then queen e7 but not all of the people are feeling comfortable with this right although this is just absolutely fine with black right so we're gonna castle and uh, and pretty much we're absolutely fine we're always looking at this again e5 square is crucial so if we want to play if we could play e5 we exchange our weakness which we always want to do if we have one and so uh this is good for black so perhaps this is another line that we have to know if we play this variation of it but that after queen e2 we play bishop to e6 so Someone is asking which is the uh, the be the best uh, line to beat the French. Um, I I believe that there are many lines that where White attempts to get an advantage, and it really depends on on your personal style. I believe that you should be playing the lines that you are feeling the most comfortable with. If you're more fine with a very close positions, go for advanced variation. If you're if you want a little bit more open game, perhaps or attempt to get it right, um, you could be going for the say knight c3 and if they play knight f6 then we could be playing bishop g5 i know that that um uh, there are quite a few lines in general to play these for uh for for both sides right we have for example bishop b4 here and i know that in the correspondent chess my friend who's playing a lot of correspondent chess he said that here white has some kind of advantage uh but um we're not computers and so uh, we shouldn't be looking a lot and trusting uh, the computers uh, at least they shouldn't influence uh, which variations we play in fact many coaches advocate for choosing the second the third and the fourth even line that was suggested by the computer for many reasons you get to more comfortable perhaps positions that fit your style more you feel them more natural you know your plans they're not messy and uh, there are many reasons not to follow absolute first choice or um, even following what for example the world champion is playing thank you everyone for uh, for being so active today it was really a pleasure to to be teaching you uh, today this french defense i hope you can successfully implement this into your game um thanks again for uh, for all the compliments um uh, those who enjoyed the video i would appreciate if you do put a like on this video uh, that means that yeah you like the video and the content uh, i will see you all on on tuesday for another lesson and i'm wishing you to stay healthy continue loving the game and play chess goodbye my friends all right see you next time